Yeah, dude. Yeah! Right on team, we're gonna get into some good mornings here. We're probably gonna hit just a couple, three sets of six or something like that at 135. Um, this move, I've known about it for a long time in my life, but never really committed any time to it. And I think it, as Travis brought this up on Barbell Shrug one day, talking about how it increased his squat over 200 pounds in his powerlifting career. And once you hear numbers like that, you go, well, now I gotta commit to this thing. And I wanna talk as we progress in this video about how you can implement these into your training because when you see this movement, you're immediately going to look like, you're gonna look at the video and go, well, you're definitely gonna blow your back out when you do that. But what we wanna talk about is a lot of how you stabilize your low spine and then talking about how uh, the extensors in your back uh, your spinal erectors are the main mover in this. I think a lot of times good mornings get thrown into like a glute thing, which is true, glute and a hamstring thing, which is true. But do you think as far as like a movement and how it transfers into additional movement, are, are the spinal erectors kind of the big winners in yes. this one? I would say the, the thing that makes it different than the RDL is that the bar is so high up on the spine. And so then as soon as you stick your butt back and you know you create more of a parallel torso, then you have just now you know, created as much stress on the spinal erectors as possible just because of you know, the sheer, what, what does it mean you know, yeah. as far as a moment arm? Well, it's the distance from where you're creating force parallel to that force, so straight down the back. So, you know, as you go down, it creates more stress. So it'll be a little bit in the thoracic spine and a lot in the lumbar. <laughs> but it's still able to tell you, as long as that spine doesn't move and it stays neutral, you're safe. Yeah. You know, if you're starting to have flexion, then, then that's a problem and then I would lower the weight. Yeah. And that's another thing, I, I, as I told Anders, this is a slow progression. Like starting out with just the bar, it should always be at an RPE eight to seven for, for the first two months. And then you can start, once you've built that stable spine, then you can slowly start to load. But I would never personally go to a true max, like say Westside Barbell, especially if you're like a diesel dad, yeah. you know, you're, you're trying to like play with your kids. But you know, I did that and I think I took it too far. You know, I got to where we're, you know, trying to do good mornings with 605. Probably not a good idea, but like, but I was trying to lift the most weight possible. Now I'm just trying to have a stable you know, torso, strong core, and that's what you're gonna to try to do. So yeah. keep it below that eight to nine RPE always. And I, when I started doing these really consistently, um, I was just on an empty barbell for two months. Um, that's somebody, you know, if you can squat 400 plus pounds, you would never think that an exercise with just 45 pounds is doing anything. But just to get really comfortable in driving your hips back, um, feeling your glutes, kind of that tiny little stretch in your hamstring that says, hey, you're at the right moment, and just some timing on how to, how to hinge. Um, you know, I, I think there's another question. When you think about uh, the exercises that are solely focused on the, the hinging pattern, someone's going to look at us and go, well, why don't you just load up a really heavy Romanian deadlift? And that's a phenomenal exercise as well. But what Travis is talking about with the bar resting on your back and high on your shoulders, you can do this with significantly less weight and because the bar is going to be so far away from your hips and bent over imagine if you just had like a 135 pound head all of a sudden as you bend over it's going to be really hard to control your body from just falling forward so there's a lot of kinesthetic awareness and just finding out where your body is in space to being able to perform these these lifts so as we take this bar out Getting a nice stable back, setting those shoulders, pushing back. That's perfect. You see where was, like there was a slight bend in the knee, but then the, everything else came from the hip. You know, if you if you're continuing to get motion from the knee. That's a squat. It's a slight, you get a little bend in the knee and then everything else is a hinge at the hip. So be aware of that. If you're trying to go so heavy that you need to bend your knees, you're doing a squat. And so go do a squat. <clears throat>
can we talk a little bit about just like stabilizing your core, like your, your belly mm -hmm. here? So I think this, this breathing and being able to brace your, your spine is, it's one of the harder things to teach unless somebody has some understanding. Um, but I think it's one of, when you look at a power lifter, like the size of their mm -hmm. core and belly is, there's a reason that you can squat hundreds and hundreds of pounds because being able to brace your spine below uh, below your ribs is, is exactly. insanely hard. And I think that this exercise is something that's really going to be able to teach you how to stabilize so that you're just using your hips. Right. Well, you know, the first time I saw the West Side Barbell guys up close was at the 2001 WPO Championships. It was in Orlando. And it's so funny, even their 165 pound guys, have this huge stomach. So you're like, is everyone fat there? But then they take their shirts up and they're 165 pounds ripped with big stomachs. And yeah. so they just spend a lot of time building. And I'm not saying that your abs is going to necessarily do anything to stabilize your squat. I'm saying that the ability to create pressure. And the thing is, is your stomach is one of the few muscles that has the ability, even when it's extended, to continue to uh, create force. You know, when, you're, when your bicep is lengthened, it's at its weakest spot. When your stomach is extended, it can still create force. And that, so you got the air, you got the musculature, and you've got that 360 degrees of muscular putting, push out against the belt, or in this case, locking down. So if you don't have a belt, I should say that too. If I'm doing a good morning without a belt, I'm still going into my stomach, but I'm locking down as if someone was going to punch me. If I had a belt, I would go, and I would push out against the belt. So it's a slightly different brace. Same thing, it's still the valsalva maneuver that where I'm creating inner abdominal pressure, the diaphragm is a big part of that. And it's, it's really just using the air to create everything around the spine to be this locked down stiffness. And uh, what is it that Stuart McGill says that, uh, that um, proximal, meaning near the spine stiffness creates distal away from the spine motion, so. Yeah. Is it my turn? You got it. I mean, this is good. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah, it's forever. One of the things you want to think about when you're uh, kind of finding that in range of motion, no matter where you're at, you know, I'd rather somebody only go a quarter of the way down and then stand back up than kind of force it and lean over with their back. And the difference, if you're able to have somebody kind of video one of these is if you're pushing your hips back and you have a stable spine, you'll be able to see that flat back. As soon as you see that reach or you see those shoulders roll a little bit, that's when you know we've lost that back angle that we're looking for. And assuming you are keeping a nice flat back throughout the motion and pushing your hips back in that hinge position or in that hinge motion, as soon as you feel a little stretch in your hamstring, that's your end range. There's no reason to kind of like force it past there. Just feel, you know, a tiny little stretch in your hamstring. And from there, squeeze your butt and stand up. There isn't going to be a whole lot extra that you need from that end range after you feel that little stretch. You know what's funny? After you do these hundreds and hundreds of 45 pound reps just to practice the movement, it's one of my favorite, like most comfortable things. I've only ever, this is 135 on here, but I've only ever built up to a set of eight with 165. And this specific exercise, there's no reason to push it. Like play the long game. It's not like your spinal erectors are built with muscle fibers that are just springy and ready to explode. You're training your muscle fibers every time you squat, every time you front squat, every time you bend over, every time you do a deadlift, every time you do an RDL. There, the, the musculature needs a lot of volume. So playing the long game, not pushing it early, that's gonna give you the best results when you're thinking about how do you 
Um, Trang needs to have a big, strong back. Um, play the long game. You got one more? Uh, yeah, I'll do one more. <coughs> yeah, the musculature around the spine is a, it, it's a capacity type muscle. You know, like the quadriceps are very fast twitch. You know, they're going to fire and then they're done. The back is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very slow twitch, long, high capacity. It's like, you know, you, when you wake up in the morning, it's like you got a full hourglass. And then every time you do something incorrectly, you turn it over and the sand is running out. And then that's why at the end of the day, if you do a bunch of incorrect movements and you don't have a stable spine and you go to pick up a pencil and you hurt your back, yeah. it wasn't the pencil. It's all those movements you did throughout the day incorrectly. So something to think about. So make sure you're doing these correctly, build the spine, but still, even throughout the day, as Dr. McGill would tell you, he's gonna, like, if you were to go to him, he would find where in your life you're messing up the most, and he's going to help you stop that. And that will help you more than anything. So just, you know, if you see yourself rounding to pick something up, like, make sure you hinge, or hinge with one leg. You'll see me, if I go to pick something up, I'm hinging on one leg, you know? But I'm not gonna be rounding my back to pick something up, so. Last one. I actually love shooting these videos like this because just watching you move brings up some really good points of uh, when you think about coming to that standing position, it's really easy. Uh, and I think this is where a lot of people end up hurting their low back is they don't have the movement uh, ingrained when they're standing up to think about driving through the floor or you hear when people are lifting a couch, helping people move and they blow their back out. Like most of the time that is because, well, one, there's like an improper setup. They don't know how to place, but you start to look at a movement like this instead of thinking about raising your back in which you're going to be getting all of that action out of your low back, it's thinking about driving your hips through and finishing with your glutes. Um, if, if you think that we're bending over and then lifting with our back, uh, that's, it's not really exactly what's going on. And what's happening is we're just stabilizing our spine, pushing our hips back, which allows our chest to fall forward. And then as we squeeze our glutes to bring our hips forward, that's when we stand up. So it's not bending over with the back at all, even though that's what it may look like on camera. It's, it's pushing your hips back, finding that in range, and then squeezing your glutes into a standing position. So wrapping these things up, probably the best exercise that um, it's going to be working on spinal uh, erectors. If you miss heavy deadlifts, if you miss front squats, more than likely you need to be spending some time doing some some uh, good mornings here. Play the long game. These muscles aren't built to be explosive. They're built for capacity, as Travis was saying. So spend a lot of time just with an empty barbell, mastering the movement, and uh, play the long game. Yeah. I would say if you want a strong uh, core, I would skip the GHC sit-ups and do more of the good mornings and carries. Those two things alone, you'll be set. Yeah. Right on. We'll see you guys next week.